we get here two hours before everyone to, to get set up and stuff. Not that anyone can't show up early, but it does take us about two and a half hours to set up. So what are you doing now? I am now just counting every single product that we have in to the venue. Just basically emptying these bins and then gonna get shit on the walls and start setting up. Once I plug in all the numbers that are here, I'm gonna check to see what they were yesterday okay. to make sure that they line up. What's the software that you guys are using to cap? It's called At Venue. At Venue? Yeah. So there's the merch, obviously the gear. Yeah, ton of gear. And then for, for this tour, there's lights and shit. You bring your own lighting? Um, yeah, we bring our own lights on this one, which they're set up now. In about 40 minutes, we're gonna do a check, make sure everything looks and sounds right. Now that I'm like counted in, I'm gonna start setting up the displays and shit. That way, when the other bands get here at four, 10 minutes, they know where they can go. I'm gonna be pretty busy from now until doors. And then once the show opens, I'm gonna be standing here until the first band goes on, until it's can't swim set time. And then at that point, all hands on deck for whatever they need, whether it's guitar changes or if the show is like really rowdy. Hello. This is Haley, killer photographer. Hey, this up? is Andrew. Charlie. What's up, dude? Did you go to Donut Friend yesterday? I, was I did. What did you get? get? I got the Java Breaker. Nice, dude. Mm. So now since we brought it up, you gave that chord. Gotcha. And all of this is in the key of E, so I can do like. Check one, check two, check it, one, two, three, check, check. How you doing out there, my friend? You're good, we're good. Well, thanks, thanks so much. much. The fuck else? All right. Uh, the van's gone. Chez, where's the van? Where's the van? Uh, Danny took it. Oh, Danny's gone? Yeah, he went to go pick up their food. Oh, okay. Now it's so just made up. You think they have a fork in here? Maybe the first door. There he is. Not much. You. There he is. That's where I am. I am here. Hey, what's up, man? Do you even have a fork? If not, no big deal. We're ready with the drink tickets. I'll just start dispersing those too. I have some of their kind of grody. So grody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna print new ones. Okay. So that works. Give me a minute. Sure. No worries. What's up, motherfucker? What's this for again? So is it on Can't Swim, or is it on Charlie specifically? Is this movies about Charlie? No. I Here. sing. Okay. I play guitar. Which band do you hear with? Save Face. Save Face, okay. Yep. Pseudo manage the band. I mean, we have management, but I've been managing and running the band since it started. On this tour, we have no crew, so I'm mm. doing all of the merch, okay. all of the logistics. Mm. Thank you, man. Chaz. How many other tours have you done with Save Face? Graduated college. Three days later, went out for three weeks. Three weeks later, went out for two months. One month later, went out for one month. Did that nine times. Mm. Uh, signed up with Taff Records. Boston Manor's first headline tour. Did a DIY month for our release. Did five weeks in early November. Did five weeks with this. Did a handful of little stuff in between. But the first like nine, 10 tours, I'll self booked. It was like 250 plus shows in like 16 or 17 months. Yeah. It's a lot. Makes so much noise that no one has the choice to ignore you. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta shove yourself, shove yourself in front of everyone. I got my first internship because of my tour experience. It was an operations internship at a startup, okay. and I showed them all of my logistics spreadsheets for tour, for merch inventory, for budgeting, for releases. I want to show them like, oh yeah, you can like organize and like run operations because that's what I was doing. I was running operations for a small band. I got a college credit for my my international marketing class. Really? I got it clepped because I did the northbound as it is in state champs oh, so. tour in Europe. Yeah. It was like a month long, and my teacher fucking let me clep the class. Here you go. Forty five minutes till doors. Forty five minutes, man. How's that look? This past week, I was falling apart because I had to wake up every morning for uh, 9 30. It's a 9.30 a.m. East Coast meeting. Hmm. So as we change time zones, it becomes an earlier meeting. Oh, so God, I'm yeah. waking up for that. 
trying to sleep. I can't sleep. I'm a terrible sleeper. Once I'm really up or on the road driving, I'm working in the van, get to the venue, load in, they're sound checking, I'm setting up merch, stage our gear, talk to the sound person, make sure they have our stage plot because typically they don't get it from the promoter. So I have to go over just like what our setup is. Uh, I run wireless ears, our drummer runs wired ears, so I talk to them to make sure that they can accommodate that. We don't get a sound check because we're in the middle, so there's only time for just getting on, doing a line check, so I need to kind of make sure that that's all going to be set up beforehand. I have to warm up. I warm up every day, so I make sure I don't lose my voice and I can make a break through the tour. Since we don't have a merch person on this tour, I have to be at the table to sell merch in between every band, because that's when people are buying merch. Play, try and pack up my gear really fast, try and get to the table. Next band starts, finish putting away my gear, because inevitably I didn't have enough time to do it when I should have done it. By the time I'm done with that, the next band's probably already done, so I have to come back to the table, sell. Next band starts. I'm trying to eat something, trying to talk to people that I'm missing at home. And also, I like all the bands, I want to watch them play, so there's just not really enough time to do it all. Who's and running merch while you're on the stage? No one. Nobody's here? No. We can't afford it. We don't make enough money, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we could. It's just the person that we usually bring could into the tour. We're also going to Europe pretty soon. It's a lot of money. We're probably not going to make any money. We're probably going to lose money. So the vibe for this tour was maybe let's just really rough it and you know just kind of struggle a little bit, but maybe save some money that'll help us out. I'm trying to get over here, it's kind of looking at everything as like opportunity cost. You know what I mean? Like it's also more space in the van on a full U.S. tour. And space impacts everybody in the van. When you're doing like the 16-hour drives and stuff, you know. But then you don't have someone running merch or taking photo or all that stuff. So it's like trade-off, you know. Charlie mentioned like most of the money kind of goes back into touring yeah, and, and recording. Much. We're fortunate enough to have a great label that offers a lot, us a lot of financial support, but all the bands are touring and like no vehicle is meant to do this. Like the, the tours that these bands are doing, they should they should be in buses, but the shows are too small, you know, to, to warrant that. So you, you do it in these bands that aren't really meant to do this, for especially for how long we're doing it. Um, so you're investing a lot of your money back into the van so you can keep doing it. We just ran out of merch, we had more shipped. I had to pay to get more merch printed. So that ate up a lot of what we had made from the first couple of nights of the tour. So it's just like big ebb and flow all the time. Very slow, gradual growth. Yeah. And with Safe Face like online, have you seen like traffic wise, like Spotify, oh, yeah. YouTube? Oh yeah, totally. Like... Now that we've been on the road, a lot more people like, it kind of feeds into it, you know what I mean? Like, you can have cool stuff, like, that you're working on, and maybe that'll generate some, you know, traffic or, like, organic buzz, but also being on the road gets people talking, too. You kind of have to do it all. Every band has different strengths, has different opportunities, has different paths, so you can't really compare, because you'll just get really upset and discouraged, you know? What 9to5 do you do? I'm a software developer. Huh. Works? Yeah. Tastes great. Tastes good. All right, tastes great. He likes it. He likes it. So I grabbed the wrong fucking shirt. I pulled sizes from, from a design I don't need, so I fucked up. And I gotta redo it. This is pretty much just merch? Yeah, so that, that program that you were seeing me use, it holds like the entire inventory of the tour. Basically in here, like kind of like theoretical or whatever, that it all lives in here. And those counts are like what's in the venue. So if I take something in there and I plug it into the computer, it's gonna go against what's in this trailer. At the end, should everything should equal. No, there should never be anything like, where did that XL go or whatever? You know what I mean? So even if shit is like given away for free, which it happens, it's, it still gets logged as a comp because then you're gonna be now shy 20 bucks if you don't. So I do my counts. And then I just take pictures of what I need. I already filled everything else. And then I delete them once I fill them so I don't do it twice. In the venue right now, I have three mediums and three large of the lantern shirt. And that's not enough. And the shirts I did grab were from a different, different design, which I had plenty of. And I don't want a lot of shit inside the venue because then it's a pain in the ass for me in a couple hours. And there's just not a lot of room. Found a stack of mediums. We get drop shipments in like once a week or once every two weeks maybe. And then it'll all just be, but you know, if you can see like I, I write on them now. So like this box now I wrote like what designs in it 
You know, so I try to keep up with it, but it's not really a perfect way necessarily. At least I haven't figured out one yet. But just the theory that everything that we have is in there, basically. And then they just go into their spot. I base like what, what I pull into the venue or what I have inside based on like how many pre-sales are, the size of the room, if the trailer is gonna be accessible or not. Like if it's like New York City and the trailer is two miles away, I'm gonna bring in way more than I would need just because I don't know. Summer sales at each venue are totally different. Yeah, it's more like what did we do in sales last time we were in Anaheim? And then how many, how many people were there? And then how many people do we think will be here today? Have you met any people in your role that are not that into it? That don't love it? Yeah, you can tell. And they don't do it for very long. Even when you're like this close. I think the difference is there isn't a this close or a this close for me. It's just you, you're, that you're doing it, you know? So this is just like the mobile office or whatever. I keep a lot of things like envelopes or paper, rubber bands, things like that in here. We use this app, Master Tour. And then there's another one called Artist Growth. We just happen to be using Artist Growth on this tour, but I've used both. But 22 people on this tour, so rather than telling the same thing 22 times, I just put it in the app and everyone gets a notification. Right now I'm printing off the set lists for tonight and then the day sheet for the entire night. So in case anyone didn't check the app, well, and there's also a local band tonight, so they wouldn't have been able to check the app anyway. How many times have you played this venue? Three times in in 14 months I've been here. So this kind of changes every couple of days, so it's really important, you know, because you don't want to put a set list up there and confuse anybody. That'd be bad. Other than set list, are you printing off any other information? Yep, guest list for the door. I'm, gonna, I'm getting the guest list for you right now. Are you oh, you're amazing. Uh, we're gonna open doors though. Let's do it. I emailed it to him. So I normally have this shit done within like the first 30 minutes of being in the building. But like I said, I needed new ink. What are you guys using, like the Square or? The same program that I showed you that manages the inventory, they have a POS system. So I use the same, same program. That artist growth thing I was telling you about, shit is in there like, what's the Wi-Fi? I sent emails out to the promoters, you know, weeks in advance to get this type of information or whatever. It's like that Wi-Fi is right there. Now I don't have to go ask someone now. The same program that I use to manage all the inventory, I'm logging, logging into the POS system for today. The computer keeps track of all the shit that's in the trailer. The iPad keeps track of the sales every day, cash or credit. Select the date, and now the cash register is officially open. I have my cash here, and then I run my credits here. There's our register. Now that that's done, and I got a free fucking second, I'm hanging up these lights. Every day is, is something else. Like, today I had to go to FedEx. Today I also ran out of ink. So it's like, there's certain things where it's just like, can't necessarily plan for, they just, you just gotta roll with it. Any advice to uh, merch salesmen everywhere? Yeah, you have to. Here you go, my man. Italian. What about tonight? That would be real kind of Woo! Do you roughly know how far you want to roll? I say we just do the whole fucking thing. Really? Get a hotel there ahead of time. We're already sold out of the uh, hoodies in the size XL. So what I already pulled is already gone, so I gotta go get more. Pretty easy when it's like when the trailer can be right outside the room. Doesn't always happen that way, so that's fucking awesome. All right. You gotta make little notes. Thank you, my friend. Would you like a button, some stickers, or uh, earplugs? I got some giveaway stuff. It's up to you. Here is the XL. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna grab this uh, binder too. You want that one too?
Thanks so much, Gigi Allen. I need the Ibanez here and here, same thing. Uh-huh. And then you give me back the SG. What's up, dude? Cool. <laughs> How did you feel like your set went? Small Talk's drummer actually was on the, I mean, he dropped off the tour because he actually got swine flu. So I learned their set and I've been playing two sets ever since. They're actually on it for two more days. Um, so I've been doing double duty. Um, it's fun. It's good. Um, I don't know. The lights are fucking awesome at this place. They're gonna give me a cue to, to kill it or whatever. I'm assuming they have their, all their own lights and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so when I get the cue in my head, we'll just kill music and house lights. Okay. And then, there, the, yeah, the, all the lights are gonna be programmed. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I made sure I already had everything set to just shut straight off. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all right. I'll just wait the cue then. Cool. Okay, let's do it. I get the cue in here. We have to be out of here within an hour. So we'll give this about 15 minutes and then hit it. We gotta break down the whole stage and shit and then break down all this. And then what you saw me do this morning where I was counting and everything, I gotta count everything out. And then count the cash and make sure everything adds up. Are you counting in here? Oh, in here. In here, yeah. And I'm gonna be settling uh, with him for the for the night basically settling is um, you know like getting paid basically whatever the contract is which I'm gonna pull up which was from the agent I'm gonna make sure that we get paid what that contract says and then it, effectively everyone else does too and that's all money from the door yep ticket sales when they gave me the settlement sheet I just didn't notice that they had put 1315 so everything looked fine but then when I was rereading it when I was plugging it in I was like Whoa. Make sure after every night, what, as soon as you settle, just email the settlement sheet to Danny with the promoter. Do you happen to have, I was, I was saying this to Danny too, I think the version I have is, is really wonky. Like, Which one? The, the settlement? Yeah. It's all fine. Like, he's worked with these promoters a thousand times. Make sure you email him the settlement. Nightly, for sure. Of course, for a shit like that, of course. At this point in the night, I'm feeling good because there's no more stimulation. But yeah, I'm pretty fucking tired. What were you guys chatting about? Was that stuff from this show? Or just... Yesterday's show. The numbers on yesterday's show don't make sense, and I, I caught it last night in, in the middle of the night. Sent him an email about it, and basically it's my job to like kind of catch it, and then his job to fix it. Who's checking all the numbers after they go by you? Uh, th it would then be the booking agent and then Hodge, who's the manager.